Welcome to the exciting world of viscous drag. Today we're going to be looking at Stokes' Law. Gabriel Stokes was uh, a legend when it came to dealing with fluids uh, and doing calculations based on them. So this is Stokes' Law. Uh, it states that the force of viscous drag is equal to 6 times pi times the viscosity, which is measured in pascal seconds or kilograms per second per meter, uh, times the radius of the sphere times the terminal velocity. Now, certain assumptions that Stokes' laws makes is that the object must be a sphere, okay? Uh, it must, all fluid flow must be, must be laminar, okay? So it virtually never happens, but for the purposes of the law, that works. And last but not least, that any friction is between the fluid in itself, not the fluid and the ball. So let's consider, uh, we've got a ball bearing here that's falling through a fluid at terminal velocity. Now the way to get into this problem is to realise that there is a, a few forces acting on this object. Because it's on planet Earth, there is the force of weight. Okay. Now any object sitting in fluid, whether it's floating or sinking, experiences up thrust. Okay? Now that up thrust can be calculated because it is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So this sphere is taking up a spherical volume which where there would otherwise be fluid. So if you can calculate the weight of that fluid displaced, that would give you the up thrust. The other force acting on it is also viscous drag. Okay? So we've got three forces acting on a ball that is at a terminal velocity. So, the, what can we say about these forces? Now, up thrust and drag must equal weight when it is falling at a terminal velocity. So these forces balance out because the, the body is at a terminal velocity. So therefore the forces must be equal and opposite. Okay, so write this law down. We're going to use it now to do a problem. Okay, so a Stokes law problem. We'll leave the ball over there. Let's give this ball some dimensions, okay? So we'll say the diameter of the ball is equal to two centimeters. We'll also say that the mass of the ball is equal to 750 grams. The viscosity of the fluid is going to be 8.9 times 10 to the minus three pascal seconds. Uh, and it's going to be falling in water, so the density of water, just in case you need it, is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So, this all applies to this ball falling at a terminal velocity. So, first of all, we start off with a force equation. So, the weight should be equal to the up thrust plus the drag. Okay? So, if we rearrange that, if we want to figure out the force of drag, the drag is equal to the weight of the ball minus the up thrust. Now, this is where it gets a little bit complicated because this equation explodes pretty quickly. The weight of the ball is easy enough, that's mass times gravity, or gravitational field strength, sorry. The up thrust is also equal to the mass times the gravitational field strength of the uh, weight of the fluid displaced. But we have no mass for the fluid, but we do have the density of the fluid, and because uh, density equals mass times volume, if we times the density times the volume of the sphere, that this here, so all, all we've done is uh, taken out the mass and replaced it with density times volume times g, that should give us the weight of the fluid. Now, the force of drag is Stokes' law, so that's 6 pi eta r v. So, what we're trying to figure out is what is the terminal velocity. So, we're looking for this here. So, velocity is equal to mg take away uh, rho volume g. All of that is going to be over what's left from Stokes law, which is 6 pi eta r. Okay? 
So, this is what we've got to. We've managed to derive an equation to help us figure out the terminal velocity of this object. So that's, uh, all we need to do now is plug in all the values. So, if I can get a decent pen for this. The mass of the ball is going to be equal to, uh, so let's write this out in black so it's easy to see. The mass of the ball is 750 grams, so 0 0.75 kilograms, or 750 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 9.81 okay we're taking away uh, the uh, the weight of the fluid displaced which is 1000 times uh, that's the density times the volume which is the volume of the sphere now the volume of the sphere is going to be have to be worked out uh, kind of run out of space here volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed so we've got the density, so all we need to do is divide that by 2, and that will give us the radius. So then we've got the volume. G will be 9.81, so we've got 1,000, which is the density, times volume, which you'll have to work out, times G. And that gives us a total, believe me, I've worked it out, of 4.11 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay? Now, for the bottom line... We're still working out V, remember. Uh, we've got 6 times pi times eta, which is here, times uh, radius of the ball again, which is 1 times 10 uh, to the minus 2. Total all that up, that gives us 1.67 times 10 to the minus 3 on the bottom. So we've got mg, which we've yet to work out. We've got this red, the up thrust, which is equal to 4.11 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, when we figure all of this out, this should give us, so this, the mass of the ball minus the upthrust over the remainder of Stokes' law to calculate V should give us 4.38 metres per second. So this vol terminal velocity of this sphere falling in fluid of this viscosity, the fluid is, has this density, will travel at 4.38 metres per second at terminal velocity. Thank you.